Pokemon Let's Go has been in our palms for over a week now. We've played a ton of the Kanto adventure, and the game itself has shipped millions of copies. But how do we feel about things now that some time has passed and we've pushed through the adventure? Well, I've assembled a cast of characters here that all have different backgrounds of the Pokemon and are ready to give your thoughts. What's up, everyone? It's Zach from Switch Force. We've got Gabe here, as well as Raven, a very wonderful Pokemon master. Hey, guys. How's it going? Zach, two out of the three of us have completed the adventure. I don't want to single you out here, but <laughs> you have been slacking. But to be fair, holidays, there's a lot of stuff going on. So we are all going to have very different perspectives, I feel like. And uh, I guess we should get into it. Yeah, so I wanted to start just with like our overall experience with the game. This will sort of serve as our final thoughts on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. So to set it up, I am a Pikachu player. I'm an Eevee player. I am the correct Eevee player so we've, we've got all, a, evie is the way just we've saying. got an imbalance in the partnerships here but that's okay um overall you know as you mentioned gabe and raven have both beat the game they've completed the gyms they've crushed the elite four and they've built out their pokedex pretty darn impressively i'm a straggler i guess I, i'm <laughs> i've fallen asleep twice playing pokemon it's been a very tiring <laughs> month i'm trying my best uh, but i have got through a good chunk of the game i have obviously explored all the mechanics and have a you know a, a very set opinion on how it goes but gabe why don't we start with you just what was your overall experience your takeaway from the complete adventure once we got our hands on it for the first time we, we were at an event i believe it might have been e3 and we played it i said okay i'm gonna enjoy this to a certain degree right because it's clearly not the pokemon everybody wants and you know, I've made no secret of my lapsed fandom in, in Pokemon. And to me, this is such a perfect reintroduction because it's Pokemon I'm familiar with. It's locations I'm familiar with. Being back in Kanto again, I know is not something that people will necessarily love about the game, but it is what it is. And I know that the first gen isn't people's favorite one either outside of maybe the starter Pokemon and, and the more popular ones just because they, they've become the faces of the franchise. But I, I had... Just as much fun as I thought I was going to have. Didn't have any more fun. Didn't have any less fun. No more, no less. Just how it is. Well, Raven, you got to yeah. switch just for Pokemon Let's Go. So there was a lot of buildup for this game and a lot riding on it being the only cartridge <laughs> that you can, can, can claim name to. What was it like playing this as, you know, the first Switch game and just someone who has... I would say, like, you've played a good amount of the Pokemon games. Yeah. More I've, than Gabe, less than me. <laughs> I've definitely played all of the Pokemon games. I've always been a huge fan of them. Um, but playing this for the first game on my first Switch ever, it is beautiful. Like, beyond, I know it wasn't what everyone expected it to be, but it was just really beautiful. I loved all the different... Um, all the different things they added, like going through the grass and seeing the Pokemon running around and actually noticing different like sizes in, in real time. So I thought that was really cool. Um, overall, it was very easy, but I did still enjoy it and have fun with it. All the different aspects they added in were a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that's sort of the theme here, and I bet it's going to be the case for all three of us. It's like, enjoyed it and had fun in spite of enjoyed it and had fun still enjoyed it and had fun because they have captured as they always have a really cool gameplay loop they've got a very colorful cast of characters more colorful than ever gabe i know it's a little too vibrant for your eyeballs over there but i personally <laughs> love the way the game looks raven it sounds like you feel similarly and it is just such a cool experience to see the characters see the pokemon see the battlefield see the towns in this style and that surprisingly carried quite a bit of the game because i will say that difficulty is something that we have been concerned about from the very beginning we, we made early videos and this was first announced about how much pokemon go is going to be in these games how easy are these gym battles going to be are those uh different you know checks and thresholds going to neuter the game experience completely removing wild battles how much is that going to dip the difficulty Gabe, you at one point were saying like you thought the game was getting more challenging and, and were really excited by that increase. Did that pan out or by the end, no, was it still a pretty breezy affair? It was very easy, then less easy, and then very easy again. So it was like an easy sandwich, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite kind of sandwich. <laughs> so I'll say that. But, you know, in all honesty, like... I don't go to Pokemon looking for difficulty and, you know, people always point this out and I 100% agree. 
you can go ahead and introduce difficulty on your own whim. I believe Raven did so by maybe just not using your starter Pokemon a whole lot because they are so overpowered, whether it be Pikachu or Eevee. They level up like so much quicker than everybody and they're consistently there. So at least for me, you can put it away if you choose to and not even use it, I guess. But my Eevee was always with me, so it was always incredibly overpowered. Plus, it learned all those super cool moves. But I didn't go ahead and introduce any more difficulty because for Pokemon, at least for me, and I hope I don't get hate for this, difficulty only leads to it, like, taking longer. It's not real difficulty. Huh. It just, like, slows it down. Like, instead of defeating, like, this Pokemon in one hit, I'll defeat it in, like, two or three hits, but I'm still going to win. Yeah. So, in in my eyes, why not just shorten the time and defeated in the one hit like you know i was still gonna use potions afterwards if i get hit so that didn't matter um but yeah easy sandwich is what i was calling it <laughs> i like that are easy sandwiches vegan i think that's the question in everyone's mind well if you want a gluten-free vegan easy sandwich it costs extra <laughs> well uh, i don't have any extra because i bought the pokeball plus pack which i think that to me was far less useful than i expected just to throw that anecdote in there i did not end up using that really at all um it is like a cool feature for maybe someone younger i didn't really like it and i I think like the difficulty for me i I get what you're saying gabe of like okay it's an inevitability that you're gonna win the same could be said for almost every game though so that's not how i felt about it i guess i just because of the fact that your pikachu my pikachu is so strong i end up not seeing the pokemon that looks so cool in this art style. I end up not having to use the tactics that I employed in other Pokemon games. And so it makes the trainer battles in particular feel very long, very arduous, very time consuming. And actually a lot of the fun is had then in exploring the towns and catching Pokemon, at least for me, that's where I gained sort of the greatest joy and the interim, which is the battles kind of became the busy work. Now, I wouldn't say that like Pokemon battles are my favorite thing in the world regardless. So keep that in mind. But I did feel like you get in these sort of ruts where it's like Pikachu, Zippy, Zap, Pikachu, Zippy, Zap, Pikachu, Zippy, Zap. And you could remove that. Like, I know you guys both tried to do. But, like, fighting against game design just to improve the the difficulty while, like you said, slowing down the pace. Like, I don't know. I still take extreme issue with the fact that they made it such a cinch in so many ways. Uh, Raven, how do you, like, okay, since... You are the one that plays the least games out of the three of us. <laughs> I, I was just wondering, like, how did the difficulty, like, feel for you? I, I know you, you still think it was easy and everything, but would you have preferred it to maybe be, like, a more, like, hardcore experience? Is that something you think you would have enjoyed? Well, Pokemon's a game that I've always played my whole life. Um, so I've never gone to Pokemon thinking, oh, this is going to be a hard game. Pokemon is just, to me, more of, like, a fun game versus, oh, I feel challenged by this game. Um But this game I did find to be extremely easier than any other Pokemon game I've ever played. I also did have a lot of fun, like Zach and you said, changing out my Pokemon to create and make it feel like a more difficult time. So while I was doing trainer battles, I mainly use Eevee, but in gyms, I kind of wanted to feel like I accomplished something. (laughs) So I definitely did my research on Pokemon to kind of train up to use against um, all the gyms and stuff like that and try out their different moves and play around with them and and really just kind of evolve them and check them out. The only counter to the difficulty that I'll give, which in sort of a slightly sneaky way was a positive to me, is that it with, with the removal of the wild battles and with the ability to breeze through a good bunch of the trainers... It did feel like the Pokemon pacing was amped up, and I did like that. The fact that you kind of can go in and, you know, hey, hey we can we can briefly touch on, on shiny hunting and catch combos. You can catch 70 of the same Pokemon in a row, and yes, it does take time, <laughs> but you can make that happen pretty darn quickly, and you can push through entire areas in a very simple sitting. I did like it from that standpoint. I guess I wish that there were less trainers, more tactics, but given how the game was set up and what they decided to to do here, like I did find myself enjoying the pacing of having the box with you, of having the wild battles not be there. That's the one that's the biggest surprise for me, and I think it belongs a little bit in the difficulty category and the pacing. The removal of wild battles did not seem as much of a downer to me as I expected it to be. I know that's some of the, the, the from a lot of people, the biggest issue they take with this game, 
but I kind of liked and embraced the quicker loop that that encouraged. I didn't mind it as much as I thought it would. I, I wouldn't say I liked it, but it it didn't bother me. There's still so much battling in the game because there's so many trainers out there that you must take on, and, and that that's that's fine. Like I guess they had to pad battles in there somehow. So hey, a ton of trainers, and I, I found that surprising me because I thought that I was gonna like be really annoyed that I had to keep throwing the, these pokey bells at these pokemans over and over and I don't know why I said that so weird don't ask but okay, <laughs> okay. You, 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 you mentioned it you mentioned it shiny hunting oh man I, I did I do not like it I don't like it at all Aww. and I'm very I'm very unlucky so <laughs> I, 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 I I at some point had 120 something like pidgey maybe more I don't know and I never so got one Pidgey's I sat there game. I sat there for like five hours. I never got one, so I, I don't want to waste five hours of my of my life again for a shiny Pidgey. I was surprised to see you get into it a bit and try to get those catch-ups. I know you use that it was mostly, one of my favorite parts. Yeah, I know you use it mostly <laughs> for rarer Pokemon, um, but I, I was su- surprised slash impressed that you were like, "I'm at 73 Vulpix." Yeah, <laughs> no, I think I got to like 78 Ponyta too. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Um, Could never push it to the. The hundred category. Then. No, I Wait, get really did you find, sad. Did you find? Did you find a Pidgey? Did I find a Pidgey? I mean, I, I'm sorry, Vulpix. I'm so sorry. A shiny. No, I no. Yeah. Sadly, I have no shiny Pokemon. Just a lot of extra Pokemon laying around. Yeah, and, and yeah. given my personality, repetition is one of my least favorite things. So, doing that with the potential or the likelihood that you have no reward just sounds depressing so i i stayed completely away i think i got a four catch combo i just wanted to see what it felt like i tasted the waters i dipped my toes in uh i had my first uh my first catch combo hit and i was like this is this is dangerous i gotta stay away I mean, from it's this. a good way to get candy and stuff and That's like true. i mean it, it there's some use even if you don't find the, the the shiny but the thing is once you turn off your switch like the counter resets like yeah well, and I, yeah. I will say, to wrap up the difficulty, I, I will say, like, it bit me in the butt a bit because I would use Pikachu over and over again and think, like, oh, I'm, I'm breezing through. But I would come against a Pokemon that had a, a strength against electric types, and then I'd be kind of in a pinch because I wasn't really, you know, focusing on building the rest of my team. I wasn't really paying attention to their movesets. I wasn't really even paying attention to the, the composition of my party. I wonder if that's a little bit mitigated on the EV side of things, just because you do have a wider variety of move types, but it, it did definitely come back where I was like, oh, like, I guess the spikes I saw in difficulty were because of my overusage of Pikachu, and maybe that's my fault, but I feel like the game kind of lures you into that, or lulls you, I guess, rather, into that trap in a, in a way. Yeah, it is mitigated on the EV side because I you, you saw the move set for for my EV. Right. Like there's one, there's one of each. I have a fire, have a water, have a lightning, have a grass, and yeah, there's other types, and not everything uh, is so black and white with those four types specifically. But those cover most of your bases, I think. Yeah. We've touched on new features a bit in terms of the graphics, uh, the catching mechanics, but motion co-op. How are we feeling about the things that they had added and, and sort of touted as, hey, this is a way that this one is different? And, and also the fact that it is the first mainline major Pokemon title on a home console, playable on a television. How do you feel about that, Raven? Because you two played co-op, right? Yeah, Zach and I played co-op together. I actually played some co-op with my brother, too. And that was interesting at first. I thought it was going to be really awesome, you know, a story mode game going in co-op was really cool you know I could bring people in um, and I had originally thought okay we can each have our own set of Pokemon and we can battle with our own but I just you know borrow Zach's Pokemon or vice versa and I don't really exist in the game um, so I was a little disappointed and it made just everything crazy easy like it's cool that I get to show up and you know be a part of your game but there's really not too much I can do Yeah, I think going through the areas together is kind of like a cute idea of like, oh, remember this? And and from a nostalgia standpoint, like there is appeal there. But I don't know what I was expecting. I just figured it would in some way match the fact that we have two. And if you think the game is easy with one, well, cut that in (laughs) half or more with two. So we're in a situation now where not only do I have my partner Pokemon out in every battle, but I also have my next best Pokemon out in every battle. And I think the drop in and drop out is really cool and smart. And, you know, I it would be cool if you could sort of pick your own lineup from my box. But nonetheless, like being able to just sort of like 
show up for a bit. I, I, I don't know. I, I'd say that, oh, the idea is to use that for when you get in a tough spot. There really aren't any tough spots. So it's more just like goofing around. Like we completed some areas together and like it was fun just from a standpoint of like, hey, the game's already easy. So what the heck? We just get to kind of do it together and mess around and oh, look over here. Let's go over here. Let's check this out. But it definitely just for me enhances one of the glaring issues with the game, which is that lack of difficulty and was something that we quickly strayed away from after like a play session or two. Yeah, I would have really liked if, you know, each trainer we ran into also had another Pokemon that they brought out and we can each battle them together. Or if they had some separate section where it's like, hey, this is like co-op town and everyone has a <laughs> has a significant other and you're just going to hang out and, and do double battles. Like that would be cool. Or, you know, if it allowed co-op in some like challenge, wave-based challenge mode or something, like yeah. survive as long as you can, you know. Hey, shake that, uh, shake that DLC coin, and m- maybe we can get that in the future. Um, so, so co-op, kind of not that great. Um, Gabe, I'll let you speak to motion. I, I know that wasn't necessarily your cup of tea either. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I figured out a way to like make it like a little bit more accurate, but like, I don't like the fact that in my head I'm doing the exact same motion over and over again, and sometimes it'll go far right, sometimes it'll go exactly where I want it, and. I need the consistency to be there. I don't know why they didn't let me just play with a pro controller. Handheld works really well, so it everything is in place for it to be there, for it to work perfectly. It just I don't want to be forced to play in motion if I don't have to. Uh, Nintendo's maybe not done such a great job with that lately. Just well, uh, okay, they have and they haven't because I'm thinking specifically Super Mario Party and this, where they take away your option to play however you want, and that's such a big selling point for the Switch because, you know, Pro Controller and Joy-Con and, you know, Tabletop, like, there's a lot of options. And Nintendo took them all because they wanted to sell a Pokeball Plus. And I don't know how I felt about that. Yeah, Motion definitely... <laughs> I don't I don't know anyone that thinks it's fantastic. I, I will say, on the positive end of the spectrum, I did like being able to play it on a TV. I did like being able to play it as a traditional console game. I thought that was really cool. For me, the way that they expanded the interface, for me, the way that they took the game and kind of like tried to infuse some elements to make it seem more like something uh, for your television was appreciated. I did like how they were able to fit all of the menu options in a pretty simplistic way. And like the box and the way that you switch out your Pokemon has to go into that category as to me, things that they did do well. It's very weird to play a game with a single controller, a one-handed Joy-Con. While that is simple and does encourage like, hey, like anyone could make this happen and enjoy this Pokemon adventure, it just feels weird. So yeah, Pro Controller would have been super great. Handheld, I think, is the go-to way. Catching Pokemon feels a whole lot easier in handheld. The experience just feels even more nostalgic in handheld. Um, although I will say there's some odd moments of slowdown in portable play that is a bit odd to me. It's specifically in like menus um, or when things are like leveling up, they're going through text. It does chug a bit, which I kind of an odd instance for that to occur. It really shouldn't be. Um, but that did stand out to me. Um, at certain moments where it's like, why are we experiencing slowdown just because there's too much text on the screen? Yeah. I mean, th- there's some other like very easy things they could have done. Like I wanted a button for the map. I like pulling up the map yeah. and, 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 you know, seeing, seeing what I'm doing. And not that it's a very complicated map. You don't got to bring it up a lot, but you know, having to go into the menu and looking for it, that, that was like slightly annoying when you have so many free buttons. Well, I mean, not so many, not with the single Joy-Con. I'm still thinking, like, handheld and with, like, Pro Controller. But even with the, the Joy-Con in one hand, you you have two free buttons with SR and SL. So you could have just thrown it on there. Yeah, they, they probably could have done more. I think Simplicity was just such a key focus here. And and now as we turn towards the, the Kanto region, the original 151, the nostalgia, it is weird. Because if you stopped the video right here, you would say, wow, all three of them didn't really like this game. But yet we all did. We all found it super fun. You guys blazed through it. You guys catch comboed your way to crazy totals. I did my best. <laughs> and I still had a ton of fun. And it's something about just the, the the visualization of the Pokemon in this way, the reimagining of this narrative and this original plot line that kept pushing me forward in spite of the ev- easiness, the eviness, in spite <laughs> of the, uh, the power of the Eevee and the Pikachu, in spite of the lack of like, surprise at new Pokemon. There were a few little flourishes that felt fresh. There were things that I didn't exactly remember that I was excited about. 
And in general, it still was like such a fun time. It's one of those cases where I feel like the decisions they made, the design choices here are a lot more fun than they are good. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just interesting when you kind of lay out the likes and the dislikes, it doesn't really equate to if we were to tell someone how much fun we had, that bar would raise a whole lot higher. Yeah, I, I, I find myself completely agreeing with you. There's like, there's like layers of good, right? Like, yes, it's not what everybody wants, but I, I've, I played maybe 35 hours of a game or something like that, maybe, maybe more, who knows by this point. I was never really bored. I, I was having a good time. Dance. Even catching all those Pidgey was fun. I just wish I hadn't done it for so long <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> Gabe, you're going to have to start uh, an aviary here to, to accommodate all of your birds. Uh, I, I got to send them all to Oak. I haven't even done that just because there's so many of them. <laughs> Did you find it more fun than good? Like, I mean, you, you pushed. I was surprised by how fast you pushed through. I'd call you and you'd be like... <laughs> five hours ahead of the last time we talked and it's only been like five hours i feel like once i start something like i have to get it done like i have to do it yeah. um but no i had a bunch of fun i thought it was so awesome to see something remastered and, and redone um i i always like remakes or you know just seeing something old be put into new and i thought it was a lot of fun and like i had the most fun going out and catching pokemon yeah. even sitting there and catching 78 pokemon um <laughs> i thought that was fun yeah that's the weird to me because like the catching of Pokemon is is probably the most neutered aspect, right, of Let's Go compared to everything else. And yet, all of us are kind of saying that's our favorite part. So, like, <laughs> that begs the question, and we don't have to get too into it, but, like, do you want this to stay? Do you, do you want this sort of Pokemon Go style of catching to be a, a fixture? I, I don't know that it will be just from a standpoint of, like, fans would probably riot, but I did find myself kind of enjoying it. No, it won't be. For my hope, and I don't know, maybe this leads to rioting too. My hope is that this continues. Hey, there's other generations of Pokemon that could be done in this art style with this gameplay with the... Uh, to be clear, you mean everything. two separate series, correct? Yes, of course, yeah, of course, okay. of course. Next year's is a core Pokemon series, yes. I I mean, we've got to revisit the, the other regions, right? I mean... In if theory, this does well, yeah. which, yeah, by, by all indications, it seems to be doing very well. So why not put, like, a, you know, uh, I don't know how, how Game Freak is structured, but, like, a B team or a C team on, on whatever next Let's Go game is, and, you know, the other team can work on whatever the next generation is. Have one core, have one less core, and you can put them out more often. It just leads to more sales and more money, I think. So why not? Yeah, I, I... I... I do like that part. I, I feel weird liking that part. I think it helps the pacing. I think it's fun. I do hope that they maintain a lot of the new visual elements in terms of seeing the Pokemon out there. I think it's so cool. Realizing the different sizes, the different weights, the different scopes. I mean, that to me was one of the coolest elements was seeing like, man, it really is crazy how tiny Cubone is in comparison <laughs> to Geodude. Man, it's really crazy how freaking small Diglett is. And it, Onyx is absolutely giant. And getting to experience like the... Like the I don't I don't know what you call it but like almost like the the life force the liveliness of these Pokemon as they move about the world was like very cool because previously they're just pixels that hide in the grass invisibly and you know yeah in Pokemon Yellow Pikachu followed you around but nothing to this extent and I think it does open up the world it opens up the experience a whole lot more and maybe it genuinely does play into the subconscious fun that we're having because we get to see everything and it's like a constant you know subconscious reward of like oh my god i caught that pokemon now here he is with me and and get to go see these guys and not just oh mr mime static screen there he is but mr mime is out wandering about what the heck is this strange clown pokemon doing moving through these grassy fields and sometimes coming straight at me like a psychopath it's pretty darn cool <laughs> and enjoyable to experience i like the original 150 i take no issue i will say one of my more like later pokemon series fun elements is finding guys that I don't know and finding and like learning them for the first time or getting to you know see their evolutions for the first time I try to usually go in pretty blind that obviously is not a part of the equation so that felt like a missing but it wasn't something I expected of course knowing I, I can you know name you the, the 151 if I wanted to um but yeah I am excited I'm joking, to get I'm to joking. <laughs> right now um, no, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm, I'm excited to go to a generation that has that mystique and has those Pokemon. I hope they do a really cool job of who they create, um, but it will be fun to be like, holy crap, what is that thing in the grass? Instead of like, of course it's Slowpoke. 
Yeah, I, I agree. That's something I definitely miss too, but it's coming next year. It's not too much of a wait. All right, so overall, this game, we, we, you guys have beaten it. I played a bunch of it. We, we know it's fun. We know it has shortcomings. There's design decisions that we really like. There's design decisions that we don't like. Would you say that this game is an overall surprise or an overall disappointment? And Gabe, I know that you want to say that it's just exactly what you expected it to be. But, but I want you to try to dig deep here and, and tell me if you think that this exceeded expectations or underwhelmed. My expectations or expectations in general. like uh, Yours, for okay. you, for your experience going from picking up Eevee with Professor Oak all the way through the Elite Four. I found myself taken aback to, to memories. I mean, this game brought up a lot of old memories for me. And they're not all, like, video game related either, so... Okay, so, so maybe I'll say it, it kind of surpassed my expectations because I never expected that. I never expected to, to be playing this game at my age now, a game that I played so, so long ago, it, it, almost in my infancy. And for it to just bring me back exactly where I was at that point in my life, at least like mentally, just for a little while, you know, while, while the Switch is on and the Joy-Con is in my hand, it took me back. And I, I of course, knew it was going to. I, I knew nostalgia was going to be such a big part of... of the picture here like that that's basically the canvas like everything that's set forth is all laid upon this nostalgia trip that that you're gonna go on while playing this game if you've experienced it before so i'll say that yeah it, it exceeded my expectations a little bit just based off of that alone um the gameplay stuff you know we had played it before so i, I feel like i had set my expectations and like you said you know i, I they were met uh, the motion control was a little disappointing, but overall, I was really, really happy with it. I don't regret playing it for as long as I have. I'll probably continue to play it some more. I think it's really cool that it could go on there and battle random people just because everyone you know, does Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. That was like, <laughs> a nice little surprise. I didn't expect that either. So, you know, e- even though we knew so much about the game, s- certain things still surprised me. Yeah, and, and before we get to you, Raven, let, let's take a moment to talk. I do think the online communication stuff is, you know, it's not fully featured, but it was kind of cool. Being able to battle each other pretty fun it's it's missing some things the trades that i've seen other people accomplish and set up sort of like this like automatic trying to get random trades is very cool gabe i know you dabbled in it um i will say that it bodes well for the future given how snappy it is given how easy it was obviously they need to you know beef up the system and and what they have going on there feature wise but i was impressed by how well it worked and how seamlessly we were able to pull off trades and combat yeah, that, that, I mean, it works well, even though it is limited, and you know, that can't be said enough how limited it is. Yeah, it 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 still works like quite well. Uh, the connecting, and we didn't experience any like disconnections while battling no. or anything. And we you know we battled a few times, and you no, know, if this is another company, and maybe those problems exist because there are a lot of companies that don't get stuff like that right but yeah we never experienced anything like that yeah i I do think it bodes well okay raven underwhelm overwhelm well not overwhelm sorry (laughs) underwhelm or exceed expectations i guess no i was pleasantly surprised i mean i know we're going through the same region the same pokemon the same you know gym battles all that stuff but it was awesome to see like oh team rocket jesse james oh it was like like, you know, Gabe said, like, a walk down memory lane, which was in, in a whole new, you know, style, which I thought was really cool. And I, I had so much fun with the motion, actually. Really? I really liked that. It was, like, not only am I just throwing a Pokemon ball, ball at someone, um, like, I actually have to have some sort of skill and accuracy. And the better I do, the more points I get and the... So I, I thought that was actually kind of fun. You um, did play it in handheld with the. Joy-Con. I played both though. Oh, you took it off and, and yeah. threw. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it took me a little while to learn how to do it that way as well. But I like that. Okay, I'm really good handheld. Oh man, I stink with like the controller. Great, let me learn how to do that now. Um, I like that there was like different versions and different ways to be able to do that, uh, which is probably why I enjoyed catching so many Pokemon over and over again because it was like a skill. Um, but yes, yeah, so I was I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I don't know if I've been hypnotized by Masuda and his squad, but I'm going to say the same. I'm going to say that my expectations were exceeded in spite of the fact that it's easy, that it's repetitive, that Pikachu Zippy Zap is way too powerful, that it's just the Kanto region. I really 
don't think that you can attribute enough applause to the visual presentation of the game. That it's it's a comfort food type game. It's one that's not going to wow you in the way that God of War or Spider Man or, or some of those bigger titles did this year, or even in the way that Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey did last year. But it feels so good to be a part of. It, it's so as you mentioned, Gabe, nostalgic, and as you mentioned, Raven, fun and, and simple in a rewarding way. Like, it just nails a video game, and it's not the ideal Pokemon game, and it's not even a new new Pokemon game, but it, it taps into the same reason that everybody goes home for the holidays, and I know that's super cliche and cheesy, but it's, it's very true. I think this is the kind of game that if you have the experience, you're going to get much more out of. I do want to kind of twist this into more of a speculative nature. You know, do we recommend this game, Gabe, to new Switch owners? If you, you know, we don't know that they've played Pokemon Yellow. We don't know that they have the the history that we have. Is this one of the first games you recommend? Or is this something that you kind of set aside and say like, hey, let's get through the big guns first and save Pokemon for, you know, further down the road? For me, it's the top tier of the B team. Okay. It, it it's not it's not Super Mario. It, it's not Zelda. It's not Splatoon. It's not Mario Kart. But you know, after that, it get, get gets a little a little more difficult. Uh, Nintendo's been doing such a good job with their exclusives on Switch that yeah, even this, which you know we all highly recommend, and you know for me this is still like an eight out of ten game. Like it's still very good. It, it's not those other top tier things. It's still gonna be a pillar. I feel like. For, for a while at least, at least until the next Pokemon comes out and then all the hardcore fans are going to be back. Because make no mistake, I do think people are skipping out on this. Yeah. I really think they do. They are. But, you know, if you're first time Switch owner or something and you haven't played Pokemon before, it, it's, a, it's a good start. It's going to introduce you to you a lot of the mechanics that are in the franchise. And not that they're overwhelming in any aspect because Pokemon is played by all ages, even if it's in its past incarnations. I just wish it wouldn't have gone so, so casual. But I do recommend it. I just recommend you play all those other games first, I would say. Yeah, I'd probably put it in the exact same tier. Below the top elite and then right in there in, in that mix with sort of your second set of Switch games. I do wonder, you know, will this see sort of a magnification of Pokemon where as soon as Gen 8 comes out, a, a Let's Go purchase kind of becomes a, a forgotten thought or is there room after gen 8 to still get let's go and what will that be like i'm sure it depends on how similar how different what they choose to incorporate in this new 2019 pokemon game but given that they're year after year and in theory going to be vastly different from a difficulty and just you know i guess how they're focused standpoint will anyone that has a choice between gen 8 and let's go choose let's go and how do those games sit side by side in a shelf and, and handle themselves like how does that work to me that's going to be incredibly interesting because normally with pokemon like oh even if you're a well i guess it's the case for like ultra sun like you you probably wouldn't go back and get sun after ultra sun but from completely different pokemon games like if you played sun that doesn't really prevent you from playing x or y and, and you know you could go walk backwards to black and things of that sort so i am going to be very curious how they what what are conversations like after next year's Pokemon game? Yeah, I mean it's 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 going to be interesting to to see what happens. Like, and we've seen both things on like we've seen things that indicate it's selling really well, and we've seen things to indicate that it's maybe not. So I I, I can't wait to see where it all ends up. And not that like sales matter for for the game at all really, but it is going to dictate what happens going forward. Yeah, for sure. To give us a perspective that we don't often get since we play everything, as yeah. someone that has played a few Switch games, would you tell a friend, like, hey, you got to get Pokemon Let's Go this holiday? Well, yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think it's, like, an easy play. Like, let's say, okay, so I'm new to the Switch. So this was a really good introduc- like introductory into, like, okay, this is how you use the, you know, controls. This is how you hook it up to the TV. <laughs> like, this is how you use this. Um... And I know a lot of other Switch games you use both controllers. This is really interesting that it was only one Joy-Con. Um, don't get used to it. <laughs> don't, don't get used to it. <laughs> um, so that was, like, different. But I would definitely say it's on the easier side to play versus something like Mario Kart on there. So I would recommend it. Yeah, I, it'll be really interesting, again, to see 
what the total sales are of this and, and how it compares to Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Splatoon 2, in, in spite of the, I would say, sort of lukewarm response to the game, it is selling incredibly fast, and Smash and this are going to power the the console for a long time to come. Um, and No, no, no. Smash will. This won't. As soon as the next Pokemon game is, is out, this isn't powering anything. Yeah, I, well, I, well I, for, just... for, for as long as we have until then, for a full year... It, oh, okay. Because you're saying a long time, a I, heavy you know, hitter, yeah. and I, okay. I still think this thing. Well, that'll be interesting. Does it reach 10 million? Does it reach the lofty 10 million mark? Given that oh, it probably that, has a year it, of it, of life to to do so, and I think it yeah, does. It, it did th- it did three in a week, so yeah. Yeah, probably. I think it does. I think it still gets there. I think this is still a resounding success for Nintendo and for the Switch. And uh, I think we should wrap up with our favorite catch or catch story of the game. And uh, Raven, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the floor. Yes, please let her go. Given your your uh-huh, master ball uh-huh. mess up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, I was in the cave and <laughs> I was in there for a long time, and there I ran into an Articuno. And I freaked out. I was so excited. It was so big, so beautiful, so majestic. And I was about to lose it. And I got really nervous. So I couldn't handle losing him. So I used my one and only Master Ball. Sad. Which is fine. You fly around it's with fine. it. Yeah, with he's you. my favorite. He hangs out, you know. Do you use yeah. him? Yeah, I use him all the time. Really? Yeah, he's one of my strongest like ice Pokemon that I use. Very nice. Yeah, I, I think... So- I don't know. You go ahead. I think one of the, as much as Pikachu and Eevee are great marketing characters and Pikachu is tied into yellow, I think if they had just gone with like your starter as your, your partner, it would have probably saved a lot of problems. How so? Well, if you just if you just had a Charmander with a normal moveset that evolves into Charizard and you had a Squirtle with a normal moveset and a Bulbasaur with a normal moveset, I think you still could have pulled off the fun partner touch that we all liked of like, oh, it's with you all the time and getting to pet it and we, we just learned about hairstyle tonight. We literally just learned that so much fun. You you just really you just pet the Pokemon and mess them up, and you can create hairstyles. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing. Very cool. But I think you could have pulled off that partner, you know, bond and and maybe helped out the difficulty and the need to switch by just going with like the regular starters. So it'll be really interesting to see how they handle that moving forward and and what they decide to do. But yes, Gabe, who was your favorite catch of the game? Huh. I don't know. I I mean, Moltres. I, I really like Moltres, and I didn't have to use a Master Ball, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, shots fired. No, um, I, I like Moltres, but the one thing that, that that I always like go back and like wonder is like, okay, riding around these things is not gonna be a pleasant experience. Like Moltres is probably like super hot. Like Articuno. Yeah, I, love like, I love that. I love that you're cold. so concerned for your your ten year old trainer's body. Like Z- Zapdos is gonna like shock you like randomly like with however many volts. Like man, that's painful. I don't, I don't want it. Snorlax is my favorite to ride. Just glom onto oh, yeah, your stomach. He's great. <laughs> he's great. <laughs> it's a good way to go. Um, my favorite catch is going to be the first one that surprised me with its size and its vibrancy. Uh, in that very early forest, seeing Butterfree for the first time was like a very cute... Oh, it's a cute Pokemon. <laughs> it's a cute moment. And, you know, Ash had a very emotional bond with Butterfree in the early episodes of the show, letting it go for the first time. It was a sad, a sad little segment. So I thought, like, wow, like, it's so big. And obviously things get way bigger. But I guess I wasn't prepared for the size differences that were possible. And to me, riding the Pokemon, seeing them follow you, experiencing them in the world, that is the greatest joy that this game gives me because it's it's living, breathing Pokemon better than ever before. So it's, it's a simple story. But seeing that in the grass the first time, I was like, dang, how cool is it going to be when I get to see a freaking Rhyhorn or a Kangaskhan is massive moving through the grass. And, you know, in the same way that I said little Diglett and little Cubone are so tiny, uh, it's all pretty cool. Like, watching Articuno follow Raven around, it's it's pretty darn impressive. Yeah, agreed. So that is Pokemon Let's Go a little over a week later. We're still liking the game. Gabe, are you going to go hunt Master Trainers? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit. I'm not going to be insane enough to try to do absolutely everything but I'll, I'll do so for a few of the pokemon that i really like and see how that goes i'm gonna attempt for sure do you think you're gonna go hunt some of these uh tough trainers to earn their badges or their their titles 
Maybe. I'll spend most yeah. of my try- time trying to get some shinies, though. You're going to go for shinies now? <laughs> Might as well. Oh! oh you, ah. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think I'll ever have a shiny in my life, unless it's just pure dumb luck. <laughs> maybe, uh... Which you have a lot of. Maybe I'll just go on a catch combo craze on some flight to some event and, and just see if I can make it happen, but... For now, I gotta just get through the main game. <laughs> still gotta, still gotta do that, which I will. I, I feel very committed to this title, and, and that's not something I, I feel to a lot of games, uh, especially playing at the volume that we do. Like something about this just has me hooked, in spite of all the things we said. So I think it's safe to say that Pokemon Let's Go was a success, and it was something that was a lot of fun on the Switch. And it did fill the holiday nicely by giving us those warm, toasty vibes and by providing such a vibrant look into the Pokemon world that I only hope continues the Detective Pikachu. Maybe on a creepier side of things. Raven's frowning over here. <laughs> but, not excited. But I love the look of the Pokemon in that Wait, game, hold on. In that movie. Raven, you're not into the, the Detective Pikachu They movie? look you're sad like and dirty. It reminds me of Christopher Robin, which was, like, still a cute God. movie. But, God, they look so, like, sad and dirty and, like, oh, I don't know. Huh. I think it looks super cool. I'm dragging you to the theater regardless. So that comes next year. We've got 2019 Gen 8 coming next year as well. What will the future hold? We'll save that for another date. But hopefully you guys have all been enjoying Pokemon Let's Go. And if you're on the fence, hopefully this conversation gave you a little insight into what you want to do. Pick it up. Pass. It's it's on a timer. It's It's got a year according to Gabe. So either get in. <laughs> Or get on with it. And for now, that is what we're going to do. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Big thanks to Raven and Gabe for being here and for myself. Until next time, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and its lineup of games, both easy, hard, and in between. Gabe, we got some, we got some challenge coming up with our intense one-on-one Smash Bros. fights, the online community there, and then Fire Emblem Three Houses should bring... Uh, the pain train early next year. Yoshi will definitely mitigate things, but uh, I, I foresee a little bit of challenge in our future. So until that time, thanks again for watching. We're on a fantastic day. Switch Force, out.